How many of y'all use night shift or blue light filter on your smartphones? Why do I use it? But I've always wondered what's it actually for? So, does it really help protect your eyes from the screen light? Also, because they say that blue light straight from your phone make you fall asleep later. Is that for real? After doing some digging into what the science says, we can say that the night shift mode or eye protection does cut down on blue light exposure a bit. But the real kicker is, we found out there's a foolproof way to dodge any damage caused by cell phone screens. Before we explore this method, does cell phone blue light actually delay sleep? Probably so. That's because us humans actually need what's called the sleep hormone, melatonin, to effectively knock ourselves out. If our brain pumps out melatonin, we can hit the hay. But if we make too little, we're gonna have a harder time. And what is it that can change the production of melatonin in our brain? The light? So if we've got a bright light in the room, it's harder for us to fall asleep. But if we're in the dark, like with some dimmer lighting, we can crank out more melatonin and so we hit the hay sooner. But the blue light, which actually is found in both smartphone screens and light bulbs, has a greater impact. In an experiment run by the folks over at Harvard, turns out, being exposed to blue light actually squashed melatonin production twice as much as green light did, messing with sleep patterns, you know, the circadian rhythms. So now, the question might be, do those blue light filters on smartphones, like the night mode, eye protection, or night shift features, actually work effectively? To answer this question, we'll refer to the experiment conducted by Tommy Serafini, who was kind enough to lend us his pictures. So, what you're looking at here is the spectrum of light emitted by an iPhone. As you can see, we've got three bands here, the blue light one, the green light one, and the red light one. If we turn on night shift right now, which is the blue light filter, you can pretty clearly see that the blue light band significantly decreases while the red light band increases. So the answer is yes. Night shift filters, or night mode in general, indeed do work in that they slightly diminish the amount of blue light but they don't cut it out 100%. So does this mean if we turn on the filter, our phone's light won't bother us at all? Eh, kinda. Meaning, like we said before, both green light and red light kinda put a damper on melatonin production. Less of the blue light, true, but they still have a bit of an effect too. So they're useless? Nah, they ain't useless. It's advisable to utilize them regardless, but just be aware that the protective effect of the filter isn't fully guaranteed. Now, besides the whole melatonin and sleep issue, can blue light actually interfere with your eyesight? So, there have been a bunch of studies done to figure out if blue light could mess up the retina or like generally cause damage to your eyesight. The thing is, the amount of light that actually comes straight from smartphones, particularly the newer ones, isn't all that strong. For instance, a lot of stores indeed have ambient lighting that's precisely twice as bright as what you get from your phone. And the sun even kicks out a light that's 10 times brighter. So there you have it. The answer is no. Blue light doesn't increase the risk of damaging the macula, which is the central part of the retina, so it doesn't cause what's called macular degeneration. In 2017, a British lens company claimed blue light harmed the retina to boost sales of their blue light filter glasses. They faced a 40,000 euro fine for misleading advertising. So, this is to say there's no scientific proof that it's bad for your eyes, but that doesn't mean spending a ton of time on your phone is good for you, you know, blue light or not. And yeah, we know all too well that it strains the focusing muscles. We gotta focus on something real close, and you might end up with dryness, irritation, and burning in your eyes. What we really have got to keep in mind, probably one of the most crucial things, is the entire scrolling effect. Let's be real. Most of the time, before hitting the hay, we're mindlessly scrolling, just watching hundreds, if not thousands of videos. This particular behavior can potentially lead to what's often called a non-drug addiction, meaning an addiction that doesn't involve the act of taking any substances at all. What actually keeps us glued to our phones is essentially dopamine, the pleasure chemical messenger. While we're there just scrolling away, what we're really doing is obsessively searching for that video that'll give us a kick, the funny one, the one that'll satisfy us. And once you've seen that video, the cycle starts all over again. So we keep scrolling and scrolling, trying to chase that feeling again. You see, this kind of thing is classic addiction behavior. So what are we doing at that moment? Basically three things. We're feeding an addiction we'd genuinely be better off kicking, stealing valuable time from sleep, and effectively lighting up the brain's pleasure and reward centers, engaging us further. So when we finally put our phones away and disconnect, our brains won't enter sleep mode. We'll find it hard to fall asleep, and our sleep quality will suffer. 
Basically, we get it, but deep down, we all knew darn well that it's better not to use our phones before hitting the sack for a bunch of reasons. The drop in melatonin production, that is, the sleep hormone, results in a dip in sleep quality, but above all, time is stolen from sleep. So what is the best move to really dodge all these headaches? So these are the tips from the Harvard Medical School. Use dim red lights as a night light. That's cause red light is actually the one that messes with your melatonin the least. Try not to look at bright screens beginning from two or three hours before you really plan on hitting the hay. If we find ourselves needing to use screens at night, perhaps because of work obligations, let's seriously consider wearing some blue light blocking glasses and also think about turning on the blue light filter on both our smartphones and computers in addition to dimming the brightness as much as possible. So, the foolproof method we discussed at the very beginning would actually be not to use it. Guys, yeah, I genuinely actually use it before bed too, but sometimes I can skip it, maybe do something else instead, and for real, I end up sleeping significantly better and feel more rested in the end. All right, guys, thanks a ton for viewing this video. I sincerely hope you didn't actually watch it right before hitting the hay, but if you did, drop a Team Night Owl in the comments. As always, we'll catch up right here on Geopop, Everyday Science. A la próxima.